find, now 5AB cubed is in the numerator, and 2XY squared is in the denominator. Now, how many variables are in the denominator? Hello? Four. A, B, X, and Y, right? And they're all just being multiplied by something. So A, B, X, and Y all cannot equal zero. Now let's do some canceling. Is it always going to be not equal to zero? If there's no addition and subtraction in the bottom, yes. If they're just being multiplied. All right, 5 goes into 5 once and 15 three times. There are two more A's in the denominator here. And there's exactly the same number of B's. What about 2 and 4? 2 goes into 4 twice. There's one more X in the numerator. And there's one more Y in the denominator. So all I have left to do is write what's, what I'm left with. 2X. And in the denominator, 3A squared Y. <laughs> So my answer was 2x over 3a squared y, as long as my variables do not equal 0. It's like Mr. Peanut off the planner side. Because you had more y's at the bottom. You only have one y in the denominator, but you have two in the denominator. You only had one there, but you had two there. Okay? All right. See, now, this is where it starts getting harder, okay? But let's think back to that little piece of paper that you just worked on at the beginning of class. Basically, this is a fraction times a fraction, correct? So we're going to just multiply straight across, but these are specific types of fractions. They have polynomials in them. So we go back to our three words. Factor, restrict, cancel. So starting with the numerator here. This is a trinomial. How do you factor it? x plus 4, x minus 2. The denominator, how do you factor it? Very good. The numerator on the second fraction, how do you factor it? Pull out a 3. And the denominator cannot be factored. It's like it's going to be. We have factored. What's the next word? Restrict only the denominators. I have in this first group, x cannot equal negative 4. That's a 1. Only the denominators. x cannot equal negative 1, negative 3, or positive 2. We have factored, we've restricted, and now we cancel. Okay? I have x plus 1 and x plus 1. I have x minus 2 and x minus 2. And that's it. So I just write what's left. If you have 3 by itself, put that in front. Okay? You want that in front. So you have a 3 times x plus 4, and in the denominator you have x plus 3. So this was your answer as long as x has those restrictions. Yeah. Yes, Annalise. 
You can, but we're not going to do that because when we start solving equations, we don't want to put it back together yet. You're only multiplying three times the numerator. There's not a three in the denominator in the fraction. It's just in the numerator. Um, whenever you factor, you only take the, uh, the x in the last one. It's like the, the uh, x in the levels in the negative 8. This is our process of factoring. We're looking for, since there's no number in front of the x squared, we're looking for factors of 8 that subtract to give us 2. 4 times 2, 4 minus 2. Okay? This is old stuff. If you're not good at this, you need to go find practice and get good. So, I need to work it out. You don't have to. Just leave it like that. Okay. Same thing. Do it on your own real quick. these four terms factor the exact same way. What is that? Greatest common factor. No. Just write it out. Just write it out what's left. It may be finished off with the answers to the odds in the book, but I'm not requiring you to. Factoring, you should have gotten this. Your restrictions on your denominators. T cannot equal 1 or negative 2. All of your groups cancel. And 7 goes into 14 twice. So in the numerator, you have 3 times 2. And in the denominator, all you have left is 5. Yes, that's all I did. Whatever was left here, since it was just 3 and 2, I put it together instead of saying 3 times 2 because that's 6. Okay? All right, now, how do you divide fractions? You invert the second one and change to multiplication, right? And then you're just faced with the same thing we just did here. So when I show you this, Understanding the process of dividing fractions, it simply means that I'm going to change to multiplication, and instead of a squared minus 9 being in the denominator, it's going to be in the numerator. And I'm going to need to factor it. And instead of a squared plus a minus 12 being in the numerator, it's now in the denominator. And I'm going to factor it because we're dividing fractions. And that's how you divide fractions. That's what you do. Now, I flipped and factored all in the same step, so I don't have to write as much. 